The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. In the course of his teaching, Jesus said, Beware of the scribes who like to go around in long robes and accept greetings in the marketplaces, seats of honor in synagogues, and places of honor at banquets. They devour the houses of widows and as a pretext recite lengthy prayers. They will receive a very severe condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and observed how the crowd put money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow also came and put in two small coins worth a few cents. Calling his disciples to himself, he said to them, Amen, I say to you, this poor widow put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury. For they have all contributed from their surplus wealth. But she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. Now let us pray our Novena prayer, page 13. O great Saint Peregrine, you have been called the Wonder Worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge that I may entrust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes me and my loved ones. O glorious Saint Peregrine, Aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. Today is the final day of our novena, and it is fitting that it falls on this memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary that is, of her Immaculate Heart, which is always in proximity to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. During these conferences, we've spoken very specifically about the interior strength necessary in order to endure the tragedy of pain and sorrow and disease. This is not an easy task. It requires great confidence, great grace, great divine assistance, and development of the moral virtues. And part of that has been the sort of pushing away, the pushing away of consolations, so that our consolations are found in God alone. Because if we focus on the creature in our time of need, then we will drift away from the Creator. But today we find an exception. And isn't that the way it works? There's always some exception to the rule. And the exception today is the consolation and solace given to us by the Blessed Virgin Mary. Just as she consoled her beloved son on his way of the cross, so too she consoles us in our sorrows. She knows our sorrows intimately. After all, she is Our Lady of Sorrows. 
And we see her depicted in many ways through our art here as the Lady of Sorrows. Two in particular. The Pieta. But also in the altar of the death of St. Joseph. Where she's gazing into the eyes of the foster father of our Lord and holding up his hands in prayer while our Lord blesses him and his guardian angel awaits that moment so that he can take the soul of St. Joseph to God. This is one of the most beautiful images in this entire church, that side altar to St. Joseph. And it captures exactly what we pray when we pray the Hail Mary. Asking the Blessed Mother to be with us now and at the hour of our death. Supporting us. Gazing on us with love. Understanding and consolation. My great aunt although a very, very devout Catholic, never really had a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. She had a very difficult time with a devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And she admitted so much to me at one point. Now, by the time she told me this, she had a very intense devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary. So what changed? Admittedly, her mother, my great-grandmother, was not the nicest of ladies. And so this distorted her image of motherhood. And so it made it very difficult for her to understand the Blessed Virgin Mary and her place in God's economy of salvation. And then one day a friend of hers said, Martha, You know, all those things that you always wanted in a mother and never got. That's who she is. And it's almost as if a light turned on. And she told me that when and if she got to heaven, that all she wanted to do was to rest her head in the lap of the Blessed Virgin Mary. This image of laying our head in the lap of the Blessed Virgin Mary, resting in her peace, the peace that she has found through the merits of her son's sacrifice. The Blessed Virgin Mary running her hand through our hair, as a good mother, as a loving mother, as a faithful mother. This is a consolation that we should all seek after. She understands more intimately than anybody else what it is like to feel abandoned, to feel lost, to feel pain, to feel suffering. Her heart was so perfectly united with her son's heart that as his heart was pierced upon the cross, her heart too pierced. What the son experienced, the mother experienced as well. And all of you mothers out there, you understand that. When your children suffer, sometimes I think the mothers suffer more. At least my mother does. We are fortunate to have such a wonderful and understanding God who would give us this great consolation, his own mother, his own mother, to be with us, to hold us, to pray with us, Point the way to salvation for us in this valley of tears. 
And it is fitting that we end this novena focused on the Blessed Virgin Mary. As Dominicans, as I mentioned previously, when we die, or rather as we are dying, it is the custom that the brethren gather around wherever we are, either in bed, in the priory, ideally, or in the hospital bed, and they sing the Salve Regina to the brother who is dying as a lullaby. And when we hear those words, our life, our sweetness, and our hope, the heart is inflamed and magnified, and thoughts of heavenly glory well up within the brother who is experiencing his transitus from this life to the next. She is indeed given to us to be a light in the darkness, a guide through this veil of tears. And so if we follow after her and become true children of Mary, then she will lead us into the very bosom of her Son. And so we will be led to rejoice for all eternity in the presence of the blessed Trinity, where we will be united with God for all eternity, where there will be no sorrow, no pain, no disease, no suffering, but only beatitude, joy, love, and peace. Let us pray our prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. And that I may praise God with you and all the elect throughout all eternity. I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.